Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Guy and in today's video I'm going to be doing sort of like a little rock pooling guide, basically talking about like safety and all the equipment you need to hopefully have a successful rock pooling trip and find some cool sea creatures. So if you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing as it greatly helps me out. So yeah, hope you all enjoy and let's get right into it. Rock pooling is a fantastic activity where you get to explore the hidden underwater world of the coastline. This guide will give you all the information you need to make sure you have a successful day of rock pooling. This is where you get to observe coastal wildlife in their natural habitat. The golden rule is to make sure the animals don't feel intimidated by your presence and certainly don't cause intentional harm to anything you find. Arguably, the most important thing to consider before you get your feet wet is the tides. You ideally want to aim to get to your location of choice around one and a half to two hours before low tide, to give you the most time possible. And these clips were filmed during a spring tide. This means that the tides were much lower than usual, and I highly recommend rock pooling during a spring tide. As you can see in this clip, I'm at the lowest point of the tide, as the beach is way over there in the distance. The crucial thing to know about tides is that they come in very quickly. Make a note of the high and low tide times before you go rock pooling, as failing to do so puts yourself at risk of getting cut off. In this clip, you can clearly see that the main exit to the beach is way over there and has been cut off by the tide. Luckily, in my case, I am able to climb up the rock armour, but of course not everyone will be able to do that, so you have to be careful and keep an eye on the tides. The upper shore can also provide a lot of rock pools if you don't want to go too far out. Another potential hazard is the seaweed. The seaweed is incredibly slippery so try your best to avoid it when possible, but if not, I highly recommend you bring some footwear that has good enough grip so you're able to walk along it, but more on that later. Now in the next part of this video, I'm going to be showing off some of the equipment that I typically bring on every rock pooling trip. Now do keep in mind, you don't need all of the stuff that I'm about to show, but it is a good idea, while well, some of the things are a good idea to bring. So the first thing is a first aid kit. Now the rocky shore area can be a pretty dangerous place. And in fact, any coastal area can be a dangerous place. Especially here, you have a lot of slippy seaweed, you have a lot of sharp rocks and sharp edges and like drops, you could fall, you could cut yourself. So bringing a first aid kit with a few plasters and a few like antiseptic wipes would be a really good idea. Now the next thing again, you don't typically need to have when rock pulling, but I do highly recommend this one. It's a pair of wetsuit boots. Obviously they are gripped at the bottom, so um, it's good for traversing the seaweed because obviously the seaweed is very slippery, as I just mentioned. And also a pair of wetsuit gloves are pretty good as well. Um, I bought those recently just because um, the water can be really cold sometimes. So obviously wearing a pair of gloves will help you and will keep you a lot warmer. And obviously they're gripped as well, so you can grip onto like the slippery seaweed as you're traversing the rocky shore area. Now the next few items in this video are a net and a plastic tub. And again, these are not required, but they could be a good idea if you want to catch any fast moving fish or crabs that you would like a better look at. And obviously a lot of people don't like using nets because they can cause unwanted stress and harm to any sea creatures that you catch if you are not careful. But um, if you feel the need to, you can um, obviously bring a net and a tub because it is a good way of getting a closer look at some sea creatures that you may not be able to see or catch by hand. Like I said, it is important to minimise the amount of stress on anything you find while using a net and tub, and also it is best to only keep them contained for a couple of minutes maximum. If you need to, however, you can change the water regularly if the animals need to be contained for longer. Also, make sure to return the animal to the same pool you found it in. This is for multiple reasons, such as guarding their eggs or young. And try to keep the animals in nets for as little time as possible, especially fish.
Another thing you can bring on a rock pooling trip is an underwater slash waterproof camera. Now, um, if you've seen my channel, watch the videos on my channel, you'll know I like to post a lot of underwater footage on here. So yeah, um, this is the Cross Tour CT9900. I'm not sponsored, but um, it has 4K and 60fps settings for like a affordable price but obviously depending on how much you want to spend there are obviously more expensive alternatives such as like an olympus tg6 or a gopro basically it depends on how much you want to spend really but yeah really good way of capturing sea creatures on film underwater footage is a great way to show off animals in their natural habitat it's also good because there is no need to handle the animals in any way or use any nets which again could cause harm or stress And the final thing you can bring on a rock pooling trip that I would recommend is an ID guide. And this is the RSPB Handbook of the Seashore. And ID guides are very good because obviously they have loads of information about all UK coastal wildlife. And they're very good to bring along as you may find a sea creature that you have never seen before or one that you would like to find out more about. And the ID guides will have all that information for you. And they're really good. There are hundreds of UK based ones that you can get. I'll probably flash up a few here that I also recommend that I also have in my collection. So yeah, ID guides are very good and you should use them. I forgot to mention this, but a mobile phone is also really important to take with you while rock pooling. This could be to friend a friend, family or the emergency services if you've been hurt or if you're lost, or to just simply take photos or videos of anything impressive that you find. The final section of this video is about how to find the animals. You've thought about being safe and what you'll need to bring, so now let's go and find something cool. Now you can go in all guns blazing and get knee deep into a rock pool straight away, but often if you just pick out a pool and watch closely for a minute or so, you could potentially see life moving around. Avoid making any fast movements around the rock pools, as this can startle the more timid creatures like fish and prawns. Checking under an overhanging rock is a good place to look for crustaceans like crabs and lobsters as they tend to like hiding in places like this as it is quite compact and tight. A lot of creatures tend to hide in the seaweed like this so it's always a good idea to check underneath it. Many animals also like to hide under rocks. My best advice would be to lift the rock slowly and watch carefully for any movement. When finished, place the rock back down where you found it, as animals that may have escaped when you first lifted the rock will eventually return to the same hiding place. I really hope you found these tips helpful and I also hope you'll keep them in mind when you next go rock pooling. Remember, be careful of the tides and any potential hazards. Make sure you are prepared. And finally, protect our coastal wildlife. I'll see you in the next video.